Hi, my name is Benjamin Fagan, and in this video, we are going to be studying about the state of the dead. We are going to address, well, all about dead people. All over television, we see and hear of hauntings, ghosts, and scary phenomena. Throughout different cultures and religions, there have been many who claimed to see, that, uh, see their dead relatives and spirits speaking to them. The question for us is that, is there any merit to these claims? What are the dead doing? What is the state of the dead? So to answer or to understand the state of the dead, let's go to the Bible and see what the, does the Bible say? What does the Bible teach? Before we do, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time of Bible study. We ask that you please forgive us of, your, of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Please send us your Holy Spirit and help us to understand the state of the dead. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, what are we? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we know that God has created Humanity. God created humanity. The first two, our parents, were Adam and Eve. The Bible says that the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. If you look at the human body, we're made up of, well, the planet. We're made up of a bunch of minerals that you can find in the ground. So before we understand more about the dead, we first have to find out more about ourselves. The Bible teaches us that we are living beings created by God. So what happens when a person dies? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 7, the Bible says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So when a person dies, the Bible tells us that their bodies break down into the natural elements of the earth. The spirit goes back to God. So what is the spirit that returns back to God? James chapter 2 verse 26 says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now look at Job chapter 27 and verse 3 to compare. All the while, says Job, all the while my breath is in me, and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. So the answer to what is the spirit that returns back to God is this. The spirit is the breath of life. The breath of life has no feelings, no wisdom, and no understanding. It simply is the breath of life that God gives to us, that animates us, in a sense. So what is a soul? We know that there's a physical body, but what is a soul? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, our opening text, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So a soul is a living being that is the combination of body plus breath. When body and breath are combined, then we would be considered souls. So breath of life plus the body is a soul. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20 and Revelation chapter 16 and verse 3 teach that people are mortal and will die. Job chapter 4 verse 17 says this. This is Job chapter 4 verse 17. Bible says, shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? So here the Bible teaches that only God is immortal. Compare what I've said with 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 15 and 16. God alone is immortal, and man is mortal. We are going to die. Where do good people go when they die? Many people think that good people go to heaven. But where do dead people go? Let's see what the Bible says. John chapter 5, verses 28 to 29. The Bible says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good under the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. Now let's look at Acts chapter 2, verses 29 and 34. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. 
For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. Finally, Job chapter 17 and verse 13 says, If I wait, the grave is mine house, I have made my bed in the darkness. So the Bible teaches, when we compare these texts, that when we die, we rest in our graves until the resurrection. So do the dead know anything? So if we're all, if we, if let's say, for example, if I die right now and later on I'm buried, would I be able to know anything while I'm in the grave? Anything that's going on? Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 5 and 6 will shed some light on this question. The Bible says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. In the same book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 and verse 10, the Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Finally, Psalms 115, verse 17, the Bible says, The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. When we look at these Bible texts, the Bible clearly says that the dead know nothing. They have no portion, no business in the world of the living. They have no wisdom. They have no knowledge in the grave. They don't praise the Lord. The righteous dead are not praising the Lord right now. They're resting in their graves. They are going down into silence. They do not speak to us. No one from the grave is speaking to people now. So the dead know nothing. They know nothing about what is going on in the earth right now. All of their thoughts perish. They don't think. They don't feel anything. The dead do nothing, not even speak or make noises. It is just like sleep. They are resting in their graves, sleeping, no consciousness, until the day of the Lord. Do the dead communicate with the living? I've already referred that they do not, but let's look at the Bible. Do the dead communicate with the living? Job. Chapter 14 and verse 12. So man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Very interesting, right? The Bible says that they will not be awakened. They will not be awakened out of their sleep. You see, it's like soul sleep. We're sleeping in our graves. Job chapter 14 and verse 21. His sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. Finally, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 6. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So by looking at these Bible texts, we see that, look, the dead don't know anything. The dead do not speak to us. They're like sleeping in their graves. All their thoughts, their love, their hatred, their, even their emotions are gone. So the dead know nothing. It is as if they are sleeping. They don't think. They don't perceive. They don't do anything. The soul is asleep until the following happens in this verse. The Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It won't be until the heavens pass away will finally the dead will be woken up. So, this is the fact of the matter is that, well, the dead don't communicate with us. So if we happen to see a loved one or somebody communicating with us that we know to be dead, well, then what are they? Well, we'd assume that this is a malicious purpose because it goes against the very word of God. Now, when I think of Satan and his angels, they're very malicious. They want to confuse. They want to distort the word of God. They want to teach false doctrine in order to prepare people for the mark of the beast. They want as many people to be destroyed. Destroyed for a what? Lack of knowledge. Destroyed because they accept the mark of the beast, the worship of Sunday, or the reverence of Sunday, Sunday worship. When we acknowledge another power which is not of God, it's false worship. God instituted the Sabbath day, the seventh day, 
Satan has instituted a Sunday Sabbath, a Sunday sacredness. Satan is doing all he can to deceive the world on the point of um, the Sunday sacredness, the Sunday Sabbath issue. And Satan is doing everything he can to teach that man as immortal. That man will continue to live on and live on. That man can live an immortal life and still sin. But the truth of the matter is, a sinner will die. For the wages of sin is death. Friends, the wages of sin is death. Now is the time to repent, to choose Jesus with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. Satan and his angels are trying to deceive the world. And the, one of the ways he's trying to do that is trying to impersonate the dead. Trying to show that, hey, look, when the dead come, or there'll be some person, perhaps in your life, that you know to be dead. And they might appear to you one day, one night, and say, hey, I've been watching you from heaven all this time. Meanwhile, we know, according to the scripture, that the dead go to their graves, they sleep there, they wait until the resurrection. The righteous dead are not in a place called heaven right now. They're in the grave. And they're waiting for the final resurrection. The resurrection of the righteous, I should say. The righteous, the good, the ones who've died in Jesus are waiting for the resurrection of life. And the wicked will be raised in the resurrection of damnation. What happens to the sleeping righteous? Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Compare 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Finally, one last text to consider. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 53. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. You see, the dead will be rewarded based on what they have done. The righteous dead will be raised back to life again and receive immortal bodies and be caught up to meet Jesus Christ in the air at his second coming. Jesus Christ will not set foot on this earth. We meet Jesus in the air. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17 tells us that. So do Satan and his fallen angels try to deceive us? Yes, they do. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the less of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speak of his, speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Now finally, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 23. The Bible says, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So Satan is a liar, no truth in him. He is the father of lies. And he is a deceiver. And same with his angels, his fallen angels. Demons are deceptive. They are deceivers. And they can change their form. And the loved ones even imitate their voice and their mannerisms in order to deceive us. Satan and those who follow him are deceivers. They want us to believe that the dead have immortality and that they can communicate with us. Devils work incredibly convincing miracles in order to trick us into believing lies. In the Bible, it talks about all these notable sorcerers, these miracle workers, false miracle workers. For example, the magicians of Egypt found in Exodus chapter 7, the woman of Endor in 1 Samuel chapter 28, the sorcerers in Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, in a slave girl in Acts chapter 16. So all throughout the Bible we see Satan's agents, even human beings who have given themselves over to the agencies or the agency of darkness, the devil. Some deceivers will appear to be people of truth and light, but are false apostles and deceitful workers. The Bible tells us that in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 and 14. 
So how do we avoid deception? If there are even human beings working to deceive us, well, how do we avoid all the deception? Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 says, They were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Or sorry, quite, let me correct myself. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11 says, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So we are told by the Bible that we are to search the scriptures daily, testing, proving, to see whether those things or the things that we see, the things that we hear, are right, are true. And we test all things according to scripture. For Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 told us, to the law and to the testimony. Friends, we are to look to the word of God and compare scripture with scripture, to study our Bibles, to know the doctrines, to know the teachings, to know the um, winds of fallacies and doctrines, if they be true or not. Well, fallacies are false, and we know things are false by studying the word, because the word is truth. Jesus taught us in John chapter 17 and verse 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We avoid deception by studying our Bibles and testing everything by thus saith the Lord. So, what do the righteous get to look forward to at the end of time? Luke chapter 20, verses 35 to 36, the Bible says, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being the children of the resurrection. Finally, Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So what is the answer? What do the righteous get to look forward to? The righteous get to look forward to no more death and brand new immortal bodies. God will comfort them, and they will experience no more sorrow and no more pain. God will wipe away every tear from our eyes if we are counted the righteous with Jesus Christ. It is a sweet victory for the righteous, for that at the end of time we know that death is swallowed up in victory. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 54. Victory over Satan and death will be a very sweet victory indeed. We can look forward to that blessed time of receiving new bodies, enjoying true holy happiness, only if we today surrender our lives to God and seek after him with our whole heart. Jesus wants your heart today. Jesus wants you to give your life to him. Jesus wants you, and he wants you alone. He's looking at you today. He's speaking to you today, and he wants you. He wants to spend eternity with you. He wants to be your best friend. He wants to be your savior, your redeemer, for he has paid the price with his precious blood. God, through his infinite sacrifice of his son, has given each and every one of us a way to be saved. Through the precious blood of Christ, he can wipe away all your sins, and he will help you live an obedient life, and you'll learn to love Jesus. For Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And if you love Jesus, you'll keep his commandments. So the point of the matter is, friends, the state of the dead, they don't know. The dead know nothing. And the point of the matter is, if we want to experience the resurrection of life, we need to give our lives to Jesus, and we need to keep the commandments of God. God will help you to keep those commandments. And you can be counted worthy for that resurrection of life through the precious sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He's waiting with outstretched arms to receive you. The question is, will you receive him today? Thank you for studying with me. And let's have a quick prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the study. We thank you for all the truths of scripture. Truly, the dead know not anything. There's no such thing as spirits flying around and, and speaking to us. For it is the devils, it is demons that are trying to trick us, trying to think that the sinner can live immortal. That those who've been living in open rebellion can live and sin and do what they want forever, Lord. And that is not the truth. The wages of sin is death, Lord. And we thank you for the proofs of your scripture. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for his sacrifice. And Lord, today, we surrender our hearts to you. We give our lives to you because we love you. We realize your sacrifice and you realize, we realize that you've given us these truths, the state of the dead truth, that the dead know not anything to keep us safe 
from the deceptions of Satan and the snares of Satan. Please have us to be accounted worthy, Lord, because you are worthy, because you are righteous, and you have called each and every one of us by your grace, your righteousness. Help us to surrender our lives to you today. Help us to praise you, not only with our words, but with our deeds. Today we surrender our hearts to you. Please be with us and continue to teach us your word by your Holy Spirit. Please send your Holy Spirit to us and guide us and lead us into all truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.